till now we have talked about the beginnings of 1969 movement the preparation or the initial days like raising consciousness and the beginnings of hunger strike or some of the forms and students getting organized in a preliminary way like various protests were initiated in this entire period for example a 3 day hunger strike was taken up in khammam in support of ravindranath hunger strike it was started by mla local mla satyanarayana khammam district mla satyanarayana and the protest is the form the form of protest is hunger strike then hunger strike if ravindranath is sitting on hunger strike what the other will do they have to take up different forms of protest different forms means what hartals uh, boycott of classes taking processions rallies and all those things in this period as we have talked about the first rally happening in hyderabad in hyderabad rally that is 12th we have talked about malikarjuna and those people started a rally on 15th a strike in hyderabad a procession was taken on 15th also then this type of organization this type of protests are uh, these types of protests are getting organized every day for example buses were stopped the buses which were from andhra entering into telangana was stopped because kamam is a point where you can stop the buses from andhra and kaji peta vijayawada train was stopped means people were protesting and stopping all the transport so that the voice should be heard by the state on 16th january we can say by this time the movement has spread to all the khammam towns so by this time if we recap the things from 12th onwards from 8th onwards the movement is spread in varangal hyderabad and khammam towns and gradually making an impact on telangana society so they were burning the newspapers copies of newspapers because these newspapers were not reporting about all these things very interestingly all the newspapers except golconda which was from telangana telangana's golconda was stopped by by this time by 66 it is stopped so there is no paper which is coming from telangana people so all the capital or mag newspapers which were run by andhra intellectual or capital so automatically they don't have any sympathy towards this movement so no reporting of this movement if at all they were reporting they were reporting the movement in a very bad light so what has happened in this entire process the copies of the newspapers were burnt this is not the actually in the last phase we have seen such protests against media against news channels boycotting of papers or cutting the papers for example there is something andhra along with the second part so they for example andhra patrika the people used to cut that andhra and patrika will remain so the paper you get at your home will be just patrika not andhra patrika andhra paper is andhra name is gone like that this protest was there in 69 too in 69 copies of andhra newspapers were burnt and the movement is gradually entering into a new phase of a higher phase like oyu students union called for indefinite protests in telangana from 16th onwards entire telangana once you give a call for the protest in entire telangana definitely the whole thing will catch up on 16th hartal in many towns of telangana today we call as hartal hartal what do you mean by hartal this word we don't use nowadays very much hartal means band hartal hartal or hartal this hartal was a form we a uh, name we used to call regularly today we call it as band mostly so this 16th from 16th onwards telangana towns were in a were on in a hartal mode lathi charge were happening in many places like in kodada lathi charge and hunger strike and public meeting in varangal once it is a public meeting or hunger strike remember varangal center is such a center whenever the movement is spreading any movement thousands of people will gather thousands of students will gather in a public meeting whether it is 1952 gathered at subedari area or 1969 happening or in the future also 
wherever there is a call or a movement, thousands will gather in Varangal. So, a huge meeting was taking place in Varangal in support of Ravinna Sangar strike. We can see a photograph of Usmani NST students rally on 17th January. This protest rally was so big. So, students protest rallies has become a regular activity from this period onwards. Educational institutions were completely closed. Students gathered in thousands in Varangal, Hanmakonda, Hyderabad and many towns. OU students were sitting on hunger strike at secretariat. At secretariat. So, why secretariat is the center? Why? Because secretariat where you have all the people who take a decision on the safeguards. Now, I am talking about the two uh, talking about two stands in the student group. For example, if there is a movement, movement will be not be monolithic every time. Every movement will have different shades, different opinions. So, like that, Telangana movement, 16 movement has two different opinions in the beginning. I am raising this because this is a conceptual item. Many of our books which we are in the which are in the market are not showing 69 movement in a good light. They are good light means they are not making any nonsensical statement. But the problem is if you do not represent the movement in a correct way, if you distort or if you do not represent the historical facts, the movement will not be represented in a correct manner. That is what I am talking about. Any movement should be, historical facts should be thoroughly mentioned. Some of the books giving two fractions were there. And because of this fraction, one fraction is pro Brahmanand Reddy, our chief minister. The other fraction is anti Brahmanand Reddy. The movement has some, what you call, dynamics in this contradiction also. If you start with that point, you will be little Telangana movement, remember. So, do not do that. 1969 movement is a movement, a genuine movement, people fighting for their rights, people fighting for the implementation of safeguards. That is the one. So, here in this aspect, there are two strands. One is a strand or a branch or a group which is talking about we want safeguards. Madan Mohan, Raghuvar Rao, Adiraju Venkateshwar Rao, all these people were talking about safeguards. Implementation of safeguards is the key. Though they are for separate Telangana, that is not the main slogan. The main slogan of separate state has been taken by Malikarjun, Sridhar Reddy like people. So, they want a state. And these people, though they are agitating for all these things, a subtlety is there, the difference is there, minor difference is there about the safeguards and the separate state. Here you can understand why separate Telangana people or separate state demand, uh, the people who are demanding separate statehood are also talking of safeguards only. Very interesting documents came up in these books, like they were documenting all the points the points they were talking was very amazing. Like they were talking how they were, the Telanganites were discriminated. I am just giving some of the points from this book. Like out of 150 cooperative sub registrars, all from Andhra promoted. Whereas not one from Telangana was promoted in four years. So 150 promoted from Andhra and not even one from Telangana in cooperative department. Eight joint registrars, all are from Andhra. And 20 deputy registrars, 3 from Telangana, out of 23 Telangana, out of 8 joint registrars, no one from Telangana, out of 23 managers, managers that is cooperative sub registrars, all are from Andhra and none from Telangana. And one IAS officer post was there in cooperative department and very interestingly that post is IAS cadre post and they have transferred Andhra non-IAS and made him to occupy that seat and the IAS who can be posted here was transferred to somewhere else. And out of registrars 120, Andhra 16 Telangana. This is the number startling. You have a minimal number out of 126 means what? You can see even commercial tax department they were talking about. Then about the fisheries department. Director, uh, f uh, deputy director posts are not filled because local people are not qualified. Local MSC was promoted in seven years and matric passed from Andhra was promoted much earlier. 
means matric pass you are qualified save this is safeguards when i am talking about safeguards safeguards are nothing but the safeguards which were the points mentioned in gentleman agreement so these are the violations if safeguards are correctly implemented telangana would have got all these things like andhra got nine polytechnics and telangana got only two tti's teacher training institutes andhra got 10 telangana 2 the two one is affiliated to university cut telang tti's tti's andhra got 10 telangana got 2 and that among those two one is affiliated to university so less tti's and you say there are no qualified teachers from telangana you bring andhra people into education department then about medical beds in hospital andhra 65 beds per 1 lakh royal seema 45 beds for 1 lakh telangana 13 bed lakh, th 13 beds for 1 lakh 13 1 3 1 3 beds for per 1 lakh so so glaringly gap is there between the facilities provided in telangana and the other part of andhra pradesh state even in Harijan Welfare Department, you can see Andhra has 28 lakh population of Harijans and 2.2 crores were spent and Telangana has 21 crores population and rupees 77 lakhs were spent. Here it is 77 lakhs, there it is 2.2 crores. The gap between the population is very less. Here it is 21 lakhs, there is 28 lakhs. So these are the facts which made the people to fight for the safeguards. So, Telangana movement is always a movement on solid reason, solid ground, remember this. In the last phase also, when the people were agitating, Andhra protagonists or the unificationists were blaming Telangana movement or trying to belittle Telangana movement by saying that Telangana movement is an outcome of political unemployment. People not, do not have employment or political leaders do not have correct posts, that is why Telangana movement has come. This is what they said. No, this is 100% wrong. Telangana has 1001 reasons to say why we should be separate. All these points are the conceptually shows the strength of the or ideological strength of Telangana movement. When protests are reaching its peak, the movement is spreading to all the parts of the state. How political people are reacting, we see Achyuta Reddy, the chairman of TRC, former chairman, he says, students need not oppose, politicians will look after the welfare of the state, so you need not protest, go and study. And we have to fight only for safeguards. And he supported Kasu Brahmanand Reddy said, he is a great gentleman, he is a good man, he is looking after the welfare of Telangana too. This is what Achyuta Reddy's statement. Later again, he is shifting his stand. This is the tragedy of political people in those days. Then, second one is Ramananda Tirtha. Ramananda Tirtha is another political leader who is a staunch opponent of Telangana entire lifetime. When the merger of Hyderabad state part, that is Telangana part of Hyderabad state into Andhra to form Andhra Pradesh was there. Many Telangana people were opposing and Ramananda Tirtha supported this merger. And very interestingly, Ramananda Tirtha is not a Telugu guy. Ramananda Tirtha is from Marathwada region. And non Marathwada, non Telugu, and talking about Vishalandra, his intentions were always against Telangana. So, Ramananda Tirtha, a serious or senior Congress leader, was opposing Telangana even before formation. And now in 1916 and also, Ramananda Tirtha was opposing to the slogan of separate Telangana. He says, the gentleman's agreement or safeguards has the moral obligation or moral authority. It has to be implemented. Don't worry. All this talk of separate Telangana is nonsense or nothing important. That's what he is saying. You can see this is the attitude of a Congress leader. Then, till 19th, till 18th, the protest, the movement is growing. As the movement is growing, what has happened? The chief minister, Kasu Brahmanand Reddy, called all party meeting because it is not just sitting or protesting. The agitators were violently protesting, stopping the transport system, affecting the train movement and buses, and the movement is gaining. 
So to stop this, to pacify the agitation, Brahman already called for all party meeting. This all party meeting was attended by 45 members. You can see Chokkarao, Achyutareddy, Konda Lakshman, Congress leaders, Lachana, Satantra Party, C.H. Rajeshwaro, Communist, Vibiraju Congress, Sultan Salauddin Vovaisi, M.I.M., Kakani Venkatratnam, a staunch supporter of Jayandra movement in the latter phase. So these 45 people have discussed and made an agreement. This is known as all party agreement. And very interesting and important aspect about this all party agreement is, this all party agreement, the first point itself, the government is accepting that the non-compliance or non implementation of gentleman agreement is the reason for the movement of this phase. This is what they have accepted. Kasu Brahmanandri accepted non-implementation of gentleman agreement are the safeguards. This is the moral victory of 1969 movement. And they have issued a GO after this all party agreement. They have signed an agreement and as a result they have issued a GO MS number 36. This GO MS number 36 is an important GO which is taking a leaf again into a next chapter because this GO is to implement the safeguards which were talked before. To consider the measure of ensuring effective implementation of the Telangana safeguards, this GO was issued. This is the, these are the words present in the GO. So, what is the essence of this GO number 36? Major aspect. All non domicile persons who have been appointed either directly by promotion or by transfer to posts reserved for mulkis, reserved under the Andhra Pradesh Public Employment Act for Telangana region, will be Im immediately relieved from the service. Did you get the point? All the non mulkis who were transferred are directly either directly or by promotion or by transfer to the post into Telangana or reserved for Telangana should be immediately relieved from service. In small in, in a small word or small sentence we can see non mulkis should be taken out from the post of mulkis. This is Jivo. The post so rendered vacant will be filled by the qualified candidates that is Telangana candidates possessing domicile qualifications means they should be mulki, the proper certificate. And in cases, if the candidates are not available, if at all there are non-available non to have candidates to fill those posts, so the posts should be left unfilled. Again a check. Previously what they were doing, non-availability, they have filled with Andras. This time they have clearly mentioned that the post shall be left un unfilled till qualified candidates become available means till the next Telangana candidate a qualified candidate comes the post should be unfilled. Action on the above lines will be taken immediately this was the these were the lines the GO was talking about. So all non domicile employees should be relieved shall be provided by employment in the Andhra region without breaking service and by creating supplementary posts if necessary. Again here you can see here what is happening non mulkis were relieved from the posts. Relieved from the post means they are removed from the post and taken back to Andhra region. When they are going back to Andhra region where is the seat where is the vacancy? So they are providing an opportunity for the retrenched. See once you say that this is illegal, irregular Irregular and illegal are the words you are using. If you have appointed people illegally or irregularly, how can you provide again on the basic people's exchequer? Come to Telangana people. Though qualified people are there, you don't appoint. On the other hand, Andhras, those who are appointed illegally or irregularly, you are taking them back and providing the opportunity to serve in the state government. This bias you can see always. So, by creating supernumerary posts, you can take back the Andhra employees to Andhra region. So thus, they have saved the rights of the Andhra people and not even serious about thinking about the rights of the Telangana people. All non domicile posts or persons appointed on or after 1st November 1956 
to the categories shall be relieved not later than 28th February 1969. This is very important. The deadline they were giving is 28th February 1969. This agreement is happening on 19th. GVO is coming within two days. So, within one month, February whole month and this a small period that is one week or 10 days period. So, almost 38 days time they have given to relieve the non-mulkis from the post and they are warning also like the secretariat offices of the head of the departments in the cities of Hyderabad and Sikhidrabad are instructed to seriously comply this order. If they are not making this happen means relieving the non-mulkis if they are not relieving the non-mulkis and sending them charges will be immediately framed against the defaulting heads of offices that's what they are warning the officers to implement it this is what you can see so go number 36 is a provision to remove mulkis what is happening i'll talk about it later now another point in go number 36 as i said secretariat and the other point is offices of head of the departments in the cities twin cities why we are calling secretariat and offices of heads separately and we are talking about twin cities why don't we call it as capital is hyderabad capital c there should not be loophole so that all the offices located here should be complying this order means heads or head of the departments who are heading the department at the highest level in the state capital. Whether the office is located in Hyderabad or Sikandarabad, it doesn't matter. Whether the office is located in secretariat premises itself also, it doesn't matter. All should comply with this rule. This is what they have said. Next important point about this GO number 36 is, the second vacancy in every unit of three vacancies in non-guested posts are to be filled by direct recruitment. Remember this formula very important thing second vacancy in every three unit for example there are three vacancies the second vacancy should be filled by the mulkis through direct employment recruitment second vacancy they did not say third vacancy or first vacancy they are saying second vacancy because if you have the second vacancy only you will go up to third vacancy if you have just one or two vacancies again this compliance with GOs will not be happening. Mulki rules may not happen. You can take many loop legal loopholes. So that is why they mentioned very clearly that every second vacancy out of the three unit should be allocated to locals. This is another provision. And to make this happen, a GO, the GO that is to make this GO implement or to make this happen. Sorry, the Kajed. To make this happen, government has appointed to IAS officers to supervise the implementation of these orders. That is, IJ Naidu, an IAS officer, he will be the in charge of all offices in Hyderabad and Sikhindrabad, including secretariat departments and local bodies. Or Vithal Rao, all offices including local bodies in the Telangana districts other than Hyderabad and Sikhindrabad. Means the work division is clear. These two IAS officers will supervise the implementation of this GO number 36. In, in a simple word, I can say these two officers will see that non-mulkis are relieved from the posts of mulkis and sent back to Andhra. This is the one. So what was the reaction from the people? On 22nd January, after this GO and all party meeting, there were many things happening. We will discuss threadbare in the next chapter. But 26, 22nd January, Ravinath Fast was withdrawn after Vengarlao's plan. And Mallikarjun like leaders are opposing this plan and saying that this is nothing but a repeat of gentleman agreement. And from Andhra side, the reaction is Andhra employees went to court against the all party agreement. Means their interests are hurt, they are saying. Condemnation of the movement in all party agreement hurt the feelings of the Telangana. The all party agreement very sadly said they were giving all these things. First point they said that violation of gentleman agreement is the reason. Then you should have kept quiet. But the government statement reads that we condemn, we don't agree with the aims, we don't 
support all these things so you are condemning the movement and this has hurt the sentiment of the people sentiment means it's not just sentiment it is a feeling of the people they were serious about the rights and you are condemning it so this is another subtle psychological reason for the continuation of movement further even after this jeeva number 36 could not satisfy or pacify telangana's readers thus students decided to intensify this movement and Though Kasu Brahmanand Reddy tried to make some intervention like pacifying thing to bring in this new Jeevo and remove Mulkis, at least on the paper and beginning. Till then, till now, it was not a big activity from the CM side or the government side. Now, they have initiated this Jeevo number 36, but people are not happy. Why? Because though the Jeevo is there, they are not confident of the implementation. Because who is there in implementing? The person who will execute. The person who is making the law is Andhra. The person who is executing is also an Andhra. Most of the people in the HODs are secretariat are from Andhra. So how can you expect the things to happen? This is the apprehension of the students and the agitators. They continued the movement because 28th is the deadline. We will continue the movement. We will see what will happen after 28th. This was their stance. So what is the importance of period? If you have to sum up this entire period up to here, up to this 20th of January with the background of the consciousness, growing consciousness of Telangana rights, whether it is Telangana Mahasabha or Kolishati Ramadasu like people's efforts. Main aspect of this period is Telangana rose against Andhra ruling class after a big gap, a lull direct into direct action they are on the streets second thing is employees and students are the two forces who can be militant who has guts to halt the state government's activities so these two, two students these two sorry so these two sections ignited the movement and they did not just oppose the andhra ruling class but they have exposed the Telangana leadership to many in the next chapters we'll be talking about many Telangana leaders were not ready to accept the demand for separate Telangana. They are happy in this United Andhra Pradesh. So they were exposed. And this is a beginning of an year-long mass struggle. Beginning of year-long mass struggle, I am saying. Just we have in this class, we have discussed only a few months, not even few months. We have talked about one and a half month period, the activities. But this one and a half month activity is flowing into a bigger phase. The whole year, the movement is engaging the Telangana society to fight for its rights. Political, so what is happening? Political parties are, sorry. So what is happening? Political parties are forced to take up a stand and say whether you are for Telangana or not. Whether you are for separate Telangana or not. Or you just satisfied with safeguards. So political parties also have to come out with their stand. This is all the achievement of this 1969 movement, first days. In the next chapter, we'll be talking about the intensification of movement and the dynamics of the movement and result of the movement. So to sum up, the period we have talked is a very less period, that is a three month period, growing consciousness and entering into the first phase of the movement in the form of hunger strikes, mass protests, rallies, attacks on communication and transport resulted in GO number 36. This is the essence of today's class.